Some drivers look at this as a playground. For them, Volkswagen offers up the GTI. Short for Gran Turismo International, it has put grins on drivers' faces since 1983. Back then, it literally created the hot hatchback segment. It was a performance version of the Rabbit, which then changed to Golf, which then changed back to Rabbit, and is now, again, back to Golf. Got that? Golf is new for 2010, so goes the sixth generation GTI. And it does go. VW claims a 0 to 60 time of 6.8 seconds. It feels faster. Just as important for a driver's car, excellent anti-lock brakes. VW isn't just aiming at young bucks. Uh, a lot of the two doors generally will go to uh, younger guys, late 20s, early 30s. We have another group that maybe are in their 35s, in their 40s, that buy the four-door. They have families and maybe need to, uh, need to have uh, some baby seats in the back, but they still like the idea of the sporty driving characteristics plus the fuel economy. Deja vu. Power is provided by a turbocharged four-cylinder that makes 200 horsepower. It likes premium fuel. Choose between a six-speed manual or V-Dub's ultra-crisp six-speed DSG with manual control up here. Not as powerful as Mazda Speed 3 or Subaru WRX, the Volkswagen shines with excellent overall driving dynamics. GTI is brilliant when pushed hard on twisty roads. The whole car feels a class more expensive than it is. I normally prefer rear drive dynamics, but Volkswagen has worked a little magic here. Ride quality is taut, though never harsh. It's reasonably quiet, too. Enthusiasts don't normally care about fuel economy, but an EPA rating of 24 city, 32 highway is certainly welcome. Steering wheel tugging torque steer is nearly absent. There's also an electronic limited slip differential called XDS. It senses just before a wheel is going to start losing traction, and when it senses that, it applies brake pressure. So in, a, in, in essence, and it's all done invisible to the driver, uh, it, it sort of reads the dynamics of, of the vehicle and um, intuitively counteracts those forces. There's also launch control if ordered with the DSG tranny. Turn off the ESP, throw her into sport mode, mash the brakes, then the throttle, and release! <laughs> Maximum velocity is now yours. Inside, Volkswagen has improved an already good interior. Materials are very high quality. Bluetooth for phones is standard, so is this sound system complete with iPod integration. Very little storage, though. Seats with classic GTI tartan hug a driver nicely. VW calls it Verbery. Get it? Volkswagen Burberry? Uh, okay, it's their joke, not mine. A tip, if you've got a family and you're trying to talk your spouse into this car, go with the four-door version. Two adults will be perfectly happy back here. Overall room and storage are fine. Four-door models have the option of side torso airbag protection in the rear. Nice touch. I especially like the leather-wrapped wheel with flat bottom. It falls nicely to hand in hard cornering. Unlike Mazda Speed 3, GTI can be had with DSG transmission, leather seating, a sunroof, and four doors. Purists won't care, but daily drivers might. I'm at a press launch far away from my bath tissue supply, so this time my test will be my luggage. There's a concept. My suitcase and camera gear all fit, even with the security cover in place. GTI isn't just fun, it's also a practical performer. It's not most powerful in class, but really, when this it's this, V-Dub has created a formidable competitor. I can see the enthusiasts now. They're saying the GTI, only 200 horsepower, Speed 3, the Mazda Speed 3, 260 some. You know what it comes down to? It's the total package. And that's what I think we deliver better than anybody else. So it's not just horsepower, but it's also fit and finish. It's how quiet the cabin is. It's the use of the materials. It's the fuel economy. You have to live with the car. I suggest you take a long test drive and I think it makes it much clearer for most people that a GTI is a better choice. My advice, test drive all the hot hatches so you know the one you end up with is right for you. Starting at $24,200, the GTI has everything a driver needs for a good time. No doubt you've heard rumblings about maintenance issues concerning Volkswagens. There is some perception that 
Uh, most German cars uh, need more maintenance or the maintenance costs are higher than maybe other brands. And obviously we recognize this, some of our customers have told us, prospects have told us this. So for us, it, it made a lot of sense to take that uh, issue off the table. And so since 2009, we now offer what we call carefree maintenance. So for three years, all your maintenance costs are covered. Finally, at the end of the press event, we were all welcomed over to Stanford University. VW has donated five and a quarter million dollars to create Vail, or Volkswagen Automotive Innovation Lab. This is to help develop autonomous vehicles, or cars that drive themselves. They've already collaborated on a few, like Junior here. Uh, two computers, about as powerful as the computers that may be on your desk, quad-core Pentium, not much more than that. A lot of people think that what's really needed for artificial intelligence is supercomputing or you know, a, a farm of computers, but what's really needed is sort of smart software and smart algorithms. And that's the thing that, that, that we feel that we specialize in uh, here at Stanford. I'll take this one, thank you very much. While we all know people who could benefit from a self-driving car, the irony here is thick. Volkswagen makes great handling cars. The GTI is driving fun to find. I would never let a robot take over this car. That's my opinion of the 2010 Volkswagen GTI. I'm Tom Volk.